Hello everybody, it's Bourbon Bill, and tonight, a very special episode. We're giving this company a second shot to impress me. That's right, it's Penelope Architect build number three. So there's been a ton of good reviews floating around about Penelope Architect, right? This, this, this stuff finished in French oak? Right? Damn! Sounds delicious. Now this is build three, the latest build of Penelope. So this dropped in PA a couple weeks back. Um, it was 62 doll hairs here in Pennsylvania. I think I've seen it cheaper, like 55 other places, something like that. Uh, but here in PA it was 62. 104 proof, compute, compute, 52% alcohol by volume. It just says straight bourbon whiskey, finished with French oak staves. All right, I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued. On the back we get Architect Series build number three. There's a few notes here. A blueprint for the future of precision blending. I'm not sure that they're the future, but... The third build in this series combines our signature four grain mash bill with French oak staves. Well, no shit, Sherlock. And that, that says on the says out in the front. Working in collaboration with Tonelle Rodeau of France. That was French for those that didn't catch it. The market leader in oak barrel manufacturing and innovation. Not sure that they're they're their market leader for. Oak barrels, uh, not for bourbon. I, I hate to say that. That's, I, that's not true. We selected each stave using our state of the art oak scan process. Well, look out, we're scanning oak staves now, folks. We are on the cutting edge of technology. Well, after all, the best architecture leaves no room for error. So, this is perfect. This is a you know what's funny is they say this is perfect, but this is the third build they've done. Meaning the first two, eh, they didn't get them quite right. Just saying that. Alright, now, on the back we get this fun little spider web that tells you, you know, which flavors go where. I, I certainly hope we really get any of them. Um, so, listen, I'll be truthful. This is the second review I've had to film of this because the first one, I was so angry that I just couldn't, I couldn't air the footage, to be honest. I couldn't. Um, I don't like Penelope. I don't like what they're doing um, as a whole. But I try to keep an open mind here um, to give you an honest review. I try to give you my opinion on what I think here. So I've had Penelope before. I've never been impressed. If you want whiskey full of youth notes, pick up a Penelope. If that's what you're after, it's got it in spades generally. Now, I've heard mixed reviews on the other Penelope's, but the architects seem to be generally positive. So I thought, I will spend this money again and buy an architect. So I did. Build three, here it is. Uh, the only one to ever come to Pennsylvania. Build one and two did not come to PA. So uh, if you have those, sorry, haven't tasted them. And I'm not really looking for them either. Just FYI. So. I've had exactly two pours out of this bottle, and it's been open probably for about a month or at least three weeks, roughly. Somewhere in that time frame it's been open because I wanted to give it a better shot with some air and just to, just to calm myself uh, from that first review that I did. So without further ado, um, you know, color-wise I'm not upset. At 104 proof it, it seems fairly dark enough, and I'm not upset by that fact. So, alright, we're off to an okay start. Let's give it a nosing. I mean, I'm sorry if if you if you think this is fantastic bourbon, you don't like well-aged bourbons. Right on the nose I get hay barn, grass, youthful grains. It doesn't smell good. There's like a, there's like that that the French oak adds like a toasted, like caramel note that is pleasant. Okay, that is pleasant. If this didn't have the toasted oak in it, this stuff would be a drain pour. I'd be dumping this down the drain 
to save anybody else from, from drinking it. But I think, unfortunately, from the nose, what they've done is they've taken cheap crap whiskey and they've tried to hide it or improve it with some French oak. But unfortunately, guess what's peeking its head through those 10 covers? The youthful bad whiskey. It's like not a good corn on the cob. Then the French oak toastiness. So I do like the French oak part of it, but just the rest is like the base is bad. And for 60 bucks or 55 or whatever you're paying for this, you shouldn't expect that. That's not okay. That's not acceptable. Do not accept that level of quality in your bourbon drinking. Well, let's hope the palate's better. Let's take a sip. The palate's better than the nose, but it's not... It's not blowing me away. It's not fantastically good. Um, unfortunately, there's just like a very youthful whiskey base to this that the French oak adds a pleasing element to. But it's like, what's the old saying? Polishing a turd? I mean, you're, you're trying to improve something that's just not good. And that's where I struggle for the price point. If they said, hey, this is 25, 30 bucks... All day long, that's a buy at 25 bucks. At 50 to 60, kind of feels like a 7 Eleven robbery at gunpoint, perhaps. I mean, there is some caramel sweetness. There is that, the French oak, the woodiness to it. And I can understand why people like that. I, I like the caramel and, and the French oak woodiness, but just there's just the base youth. Now, I will say in the three weeks since I filmed my very angry episode, it's gotten a little better with some air, but it's just not acceptable acceptable to me at 60 bucks. I'm sorry. Uh, Penelope's putting out a lot of finishing casks. Good for them. Will I buy another? No. I think I'm done. I, I've now spent... I think the, the, the store pick barrel strength one I had was like 65, so... I've now spent $127 on Penelope, and I've regretted every single one of them. So, I think I'm done uh, until they really start aging their product more. And unfortunately, I don't know when that is, I'll tell you that. Now, you might say, French oak, that, that, that sounds somewhat familiar to me. Where else can I get that? Right here in Maker's Mark 46. Now, this bottle is like half price. Of that Penelope Architect, and we, we get we get French oak right here in the front. Kentucky Street Bourbon Whiskey finished with ten version French oak staves. It's like they're doing the same thing, but these guys here have been doing it a lot longer. This one is a uh, ninety-four proof. Compute compute forty-seven point five percent alcohol by volume. Oh no, sorry, forty. Oh, I computed that wrong. Forty-seven percent alcohol by volume. You know, now, so this is lower proof, right? Screw top, no less. We gotta, we gotta, we'll, we'll put this in the, in the mini glen here. Oh, Maker's Mark 46, baby. Let's give this a whiff. Oh, that sweet wheat and French oak scent. No youth notes, no hay barn, no grassy field. Just caramel and, and sweet wheat. Let's take a sip. Much better. Whoops, that Penelope. It's like half price. If you want a French oak influence, go pick up a Maker's Mark 46. If you don't want something that's 94 proof, go pick up a Maker's 46 cash strength. That's 60 bucks. That's also 60 bucks. So that's the same price as the Penelope, and it's, it's ten times better. I mean, I I know that a lot of you might disagree. I see a lot of love for Penelope. Um, it's not my jam. And if this saves someone from wasting their money, then this video is well worth it. If you like youthful grassy notes, often found in Willet Pottswill, as well as a few other Willet products, the lower end tier of Willet, um, or any craft young bourbon if you like that then penelope is for you 
if you don't like youth notes in your bourbon, which we don't here at Bourbon Bill, then then really Penelope is not for you, and and you really shouldn't feel like you're missing out by not buying it. I'm I'm trying to I'm saving you money here, okay? If you like an older, well-rounded, well-aged bourbon, don't buy anything from Penelope. I know I'm done. So th this was a, this was a, the second chance, and they straight to hell. They shot that right down. Um, the architect's probably better than the than the store pick that I had, but uh, I mean we're talking minute differences here. Now you might say, well, you know, Bourbon Bill, I don't like a well-aged bourbon. I like a young bourbon. Well, let me give you some better options. Better option number one. Chattanooga Cast Strength 111. Guess what? 111 proof. Aged here in the back says greater than two years. So guess what? They're being honest. There's no age statement on the Penelope. But they're being honest here and saying that this stuff here is, is aged more than two years, but probably two to four maybe, somewhere in there. We'll put this here in this other Glen Karen. There's a shout out to a longtime supporter of the channel, James. James, I appreciate you sending this bottle to me. Uh, we'll be using this more in a. Well, I'm going to do a big Chattanooga, Chattanooga video coming up. It hasn't come out yet, but uh, Chattanooga is producing some good stuff. So here you go. Roughly two years plus bourbon. Oh! Where's the youth notes? They're not there. Just sweet caramel. There's no grass or hay or, or horse stall. It's amazing how people could, could age a bourbon for not that long and, and still not have the youth notes. Let's take a sip. Chattanooga 111, so this is a high malt, so it's kind of a high malt bourbon. It's got that maltiness to it, a little bit of earthiness. Very good. No grass, though. You want another example? Here you go. Big fan on this channel of Wilderness Trail. Another company doing craft distilling right. This one here is a store pick. Four years and four months. Now this happens to be a uh, wheated bourbon, but I have other ones. Either way, this is a cash strength. This one's basically 105 proof. Four years. Basically the same proof as uh, the Penelope Architect. Let's see if we can detect any hints of grass or hay. Nope. All caramel. Caramel and just like delicious breadiness. No youth notes at all. What? No youth notes at all. Let's take a sip. Thick, delicious waves of caramel and oak. And like a... Like a biscuit. Like a good old maple-coated biscuit. That bottle also brought to you by courtesy of James. Thank you again, James. There you have it, folks. There's two distilleries putting out stuff that, by the way, is cheaper than the Penelope. Aged roughly probably the same time. Penelope doesn't tell you, but it's, it's young, trust me. With no youth notes. So, Penelope, you're not going to watch this video, but what's your excuse? Why are you putting out bourbon at a price point that's higher than this or this full of grass and hay? Give you two options here that are better, that are aged, uh, you know, lower lower ages. And if you want French oak, just just go get a Maker's Mark 46 or a 46 cast strength. If you want something in the 109, 110 range, it's that simple. Avoid the Penelope. It's not good. So if you like what we saw tonight, please like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. Have a good evening, everybody.